Today's video was originally going to be an update video talking about all the plans and goals that we have on the channel for 2022. But, but, I came across this company with a deal on isopods and I just could not say no to the amazing discounts that they were offering. So let's open this box and see what isopods we bought from Exotic Empire. Hello and welcome back to Bug Realms. On this channel we like to discuss all things creepy crawly. So if that's something that interests you, please consider subscribing to the channel. So here, on my left, might show as your right, I'm not quite sure which way it films, but on my left here are five enclosures for five different species of isopod we have in here. Now, some of these are only coming in sets of 10. These might seem rather large for just 10 isopods, but uh, my personal research has been showing me that if you give them that bit of extra space when they're a small colony, they tend to thrive much better. Now, I'm not sure if that's the case for everybody, but that's certainly been the case for me. And that is something I will update you guys on in a different video, how I figured this out. So these are actually kind of in my way, so I'm gonna move them down here in a minute. So as I said, this was bought from Exotic Empire. Um, I found them offering discounted price if you were to message the owner privately rather than going through the website and they were just absolutely amazing deals now these deals i'm pretty sure would have ended by the time this video comes out to you guys unless there's any kind of extension on but i was just shocked at the money that i got off from these beauties now i know ice pods aren't for everybody i know that but they are something that are gonna be featuring a little bit more throughout the next year on this channel. And that's for a couple of reasons. And those reasons are something that I'm gonna go into in my update video. So I've opened this box. Let's have a look in it together. So being my first time buying from this company, I'll sort of review it too. I can already see the packing is well done with this kind of fabricated cardboard. I'm, I'm not quite sure how you would call that. But it's, uh, it's really cool actually. I've not seen anyone use this kind of stuff. But it seems ideal actually. Let's see. Certainly packs well. Cool, cool, cool. So, one tub, two tubs, three tubs. Oops, slightly opened that one. Four tubs. Oh, no Sam, don't open them, don't set them free. And tub number five. I've just checked there's nothing else in here to show you. Nope, all packing. Perfectly packed, perfectly happy with that. So I went for quite a mixture here today, folks. We've gone from some super common isopods right up to some higher end expensive isopods. Not the most expensive isopod, uh, start again. <laughs> Not the most expensive isopods by far, but still ones that are new enough in the hobby that they're still holding a reasonable price range. So where to start, where to start, where to start? I think the first one we will look in, folks, is actually a species that, if you followed my old channel, we did own before, and I didn't do amazingly well with them, and that is the Porcelio Hoffman Sagai. So I'm gonna get the camera down on this pot, we'll have a look at them together, and uh, I'll explain what I think went wrong last time. So let me just open this tub. Now, in my old channel, I talked about a substrate mix that I use. Um, we will cover it again on this channel, but not in this video. This video is basically just looking at our animals. Now, I like these little tubs that these are in. It's got the logo of the company there and written on the side what we have, P. 
Hoffman, Seigai, 10 plus. Oh, so we might have extras in here. So I've only paid for 10 and had a discount. I'll tell you what, I might have to put this camera back on the tripod while I have a quick count. Bear with me a second. Okay, so let's have a look. Now, there is one thing I'd like to add. I remember a few years ago, people were going on about invert YouTubers, you know, always getting extras and freebies by companies. Now, this gentleman did not ask me to record this video. I did it because I like to record my journey. So the fact that there is 10 plus in here has nothing to do with the fact that I'm a YouTuber. It might be for the fact of the money I spent. So here are the Hoffman Seigai. Now we'll have a closer look in a minute. Let's just do a little count. That's a female, number one. It's a male. Okay, so I counted 12 in there. 12 Hoffman Seigai for the price of 10 plus the Christmas discount. That is fantastic, especially with a species like this. Now, the reason I think I failed the first time round was because I bought a batch of, I believe, 10, and I had a couple of DOAs. There was no DOAs in this tub, and I seem to have more males than females in my last batch. Um, so that is my guessing on it. Also, these guys do have it slightly on the, the drier side. So for isopods, I always have a damp side, which is this side with the moss here, and then a drier side. But conditioning-wise, I thought that I kept them okay. So I'm not sure why, even with just the small amount of females, that we didn't have the right reproduction. And isopods can start reproducing before full size as well. But uh, yeah. Who knows, maybe they were old and that's why we had DOAs. I really don't know. But let's have a closer look at these ones. So there we are. What's cool about Hoffman Seigai is the sheer size of them. These are titans of the isopod world. Really, really big if you compare this to my finger here. It's a lot bigger than isopods we see. Now you can have different uh, color morphs or variations to Hoffman Seigai. So here, as far as I can tell, they are all your typical gray ones with a slightly whiter skirt, but you can get kind of chocolatey ones and other ones too. Now that's not to say these don't have the genetics to do so in their bloodlines. We will just have to see generation after generation. But I am well chuffed with these, well chuffed with these. So we've still got four species to cover. Again, this is not an educational video. This is just a part of my journey and this unboxing. So we might be getting through some of these a little bit quicker. So which one next? I think we're gonna go for the most common isopod that I bought from this batch, the P. Lavis White. Now I ordered 50 of these and we got 50 plus. Oh, exciting. Let's get a new box ready for these guys. Ah, oh, there's something important I forgot to add, folks, as well. I do put a cork bark curve hide part going between the moisture side and the drier side so that they can regulate um, their moisture levels or humidity levels. But I'm putting all these in after the videos. I wanted to leave enough space for you to see. I also have some additional rotting white wood to add in here too. Something I should have pointed out at the start. Now I'm not going to count these being 50 plus, but we can just take a look. So I have P. Lavis dairy cows in my collection currently, but I wanted the whites. Now I'm curious to see how white the whites really are. Wow. Okay. Down in here. Can you see them there? Really, really pretty. Look at that. So they still have a slightly darkened stripe going across the back of them, but for the most part, they are fully white. I have a thing for white isopods, folks. I don't know what it is. Like with my dairy cows that are white with black patches, I just adore white isopods. So, let's start pushing this out I'm not going to get these out singly look at them all just going to gently grip to get those attached to the moss 
oh, moss side should go on the wet side, Sam. There they are, scurrying about. Some of them have ever so slightly uh, caramelised colours, but as I said, for the most part, completely white. And some of them have buried down under this substrate here. Beautiful. Right, we're just going to tip this now gently. Any more in that tub? Nope. Look at them scurrying away. My support army. So there are some younger ones in here as well. I did notice. Look at that little one. Look at it go. <laughs> I did notice some minuscule mankai that was probably uh, in the substrate as well, which is really handy because it means we have some nice young isopods to grow on. But look how quickly these have scurried away and hidden. The more we get of them, the more we will see of them. And the best bit about putting your bark in as well is normally when you lift that up and turn it, they're normally all underneath and you can have a right good glance. So with our P. Lavis white over and done with, we're going to move on to, hmm, let's have a think. Save the best for last. Let's do an armadillidium. We have two armadillidium isopods to get through. So here we have 10 plus again of the armadillidium maculatum. Where are they? Where are you guys? These ones are hiding very. Ah, ha, ha. There they are. So they have that typical, well known zebra patterning on them. Oh, I love these guys. I should have got these a long time ago. I've always, always eyed them up, but never owned them until now there we go have a look at that one that's a real perfect specimen there got that beautiful shine to them oh baby baby down there wow and I've got to say this substrate mix feels so perfect like for isopods absolutely perfect so this company clearly know what they're doing in keeping isopods so massive well done to exotic empire now i'm not an isopod expert this is something that i've only been into in the last year or so so i have a lot to learn myself but i can tell you that this is a very rich supreme um, substrate for them you can just feel it in the texture, you can see it with your eyes, it's spot on. So now that we've had a look at our zebras, let's start tipping this in gently. I mean from the last count and visuals, I don't feel the need to count these anymore. The only one I am going to count is the rarest of that selection now i've just made a pile here oh, i'm sorry thy little zebras are you all okay can't even see him now if you can spot one comment it below better eyes than bugman sam in fact most people have better eyes than bugman sam but it's fine anyway they're all hiding i don't want to stress them out particularly but there we go okay so we've got another armadillidium species next let's just pop this lid on we have the armadillidium vulgare or vulgar vulgare is how i say it magic potion 10 plus i'm excited to see these i was going to get these when i started to get into isopods last year but i ended up having too many projects that the isopods didn't continue it's a mistake that will not happen this year I'll be very gentle when removing this. 
I know you guys are in. Oh, there's a little one. Come on. Come out for the people to see. There's only a little specimen there. I actually don't know how big these get. Can you see that slight coloration? I know it looks mostly white, but there's bits of yellow on there. Magic potion morphs are amazing. I just need to find you a really good specimen in here if I can. That's that same specimen. Yeah, you can see it a bit better now. You see the, the little flecks of color on there? There's another one just buried underneath here. Finally, I found one where you can have a proper view. Is that not striking? You've got your whites, your yellows, your darker spots. Oh, sorry, dude. <laughs> Come on, you can do it. You can do it. Come on, it's really not that much of a struggle. Tip yourself, tip yourself. Reminds me of a knocked over tortoise. It's because it hasn't got much to grip on there. To, it's just, <laughs> oh, shame. Right, let's give you a hand then. There. Now you can grip on. I love these. I think this is such a cool colour morph. <laughs> so these appear to be very shy, but I've never kept them before. So I'm not sure what they'll be like in a larger colony. Oh look, we finally got some good shots of the magic potion. Now before I, this guy gets all comfortable back in his home, again, we are going to very, very gently get these out. In fact, I think we might be safer. Oh, hello. Gently tipping. I love this substrate mix. It's just so fluffy. Anyway, we got a good look at those. So we are moving on to a species I cannot wait to show you. Or oh, exciting times. So it is not a ducky, but it is a Kubaris. So if you didn't know already, we have Kubara species panda kings and they are breeding and hello. Sorry, got distracted. Look at that one in a ball and you can still see the coloration. So yes, oh, oh there's another one. Oh look, oh, this is exciting. So yes, we are going to move on to our Kubaris now. I just, oh my God, I can't help but stare though. Come on, Sam, stop being distracted. But they're so pretty, they're so pretty. I cannot wait to put all the bark pieces in and have that moment of lift, and there they are. Okay, 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 lid on. Baba, Kabaris species, red edge. And the fact that there is a 10 plus there is incredible. Now these species, I've seen these be selling anywhere between like £70 and £90 for 10. Now obviously we got a, a big discount on these as it is. So the fact that for a species of that price to have a 10 plus is incredible. Oh my goodness. There they are. Ah, uh, that's a good one to look at. So you can see how the skirt around the edge is like a ready orange colour, hence the name and the body segment is kind of uh, a brownish wow look at them now i reckon if you popped a bit of a photograph on one of these with a, a photographic editor you could really see that red skirt now the lights on them so you can see how they've all started dispersing down Okay, I'm gonna put the camera on a tripod. I think I feel the need to count these being a species of a higher value. 
I'd like to know how many he's put in here. I love the shape of Kubaris as well. I love the overall look of Kubaris. They are amazing. Now I've got a white light feature on, which is probably taking away some of the red. I can see it a bit better with my eyes than I can on the camera. But you notice the ones in a bit more shaded area, how it pops a bit more. Now these guys are all trying to get out and I want to do my count. So let's pop you on the tripod. Okay, they're all in. I counted at least 12, um, but I did kind of rush through. So there may well be Mankai in there, or there might have been one or two I missed. But the fact that having those extras, even on something more expensive, was incredible. So massive, massive thank you to these guys for doing that for me. Now, they've all kind of burrowed away. I wanted to get some shots of them in here. Um, Oh, there's a little one. Now, I've always referred to isopods as my little gemstones, and I'm going to continue to do that because all your different color variations, that's really what they are. They're like living gemstones, and I just think they're beautiful absolutely beautiful, and they're very therapeutic as well. If you find yourself stressed, and you have isopods a bit more in abundance than what we can see here just watching them can really really de-stress you and if you'd like me to do a video on how exactly that works for me let me know in the comments below um, and I'll be more than happy to do so because the world is a horrible place a stressful place and things like this can make it worth it make it beautiful Hello little Kubaris Red Edge. You having an explore? You're gorgeous. I'd also like to do a video on why I suppose are not boring as well. Um, but I think I need a few more species under my belt before I do that. Wow. So stay tuned for my next video guys where I talk about my goals and ambitions for the next year. That should be the next video unless something else crops up. Oh wow, you can see the light shine right through that Cubaris there. Really, really cool. Ah, oh, it's come to say hi. Amazing. Now Cubaris are my favourite genus of isopod. And that's not just because they contain the duckies, that's because everything about them fascinates me. Their general shape is just amazing to me. The colorations you can get in them. Yes, owning duckies one day would be amazing. But all Kubaris just seem to fascinate me. I cannot wait to get my hands on some more. So fingers crossed we do well with these Kubaris species, Red Edge as well as all the others too, of course. So that's that for this video. Now you might have noticed that in this video and the last video, I'm starting to get my beard back. Um, I'm allowed one at work at last, as long as I keep it short. So as long as I keep trimming it down like I have done here, Bugmouth Sam is back with a beard and I love it. So folks, as I said, stay tuned for the update video. It's not just gonna be an update of me sat here talking. There are things to show you. Um, I went on a trip recently and I got some spider gifts, some tarantula gifts um, that I'd like to show off to you in that video. I received a Christmas present from a subscriber and patron of mine that he's actually a bit of a lifesaver for me in the realm, it's amazing, and, and various other things. So please, please, it's not just gonna be me jabbering on, there is stuff to show you in the update video coming next. So I wish you all a very good new year and I will see you next week on Sunday. Thanks for watching guys. And remember as well, check out Exotic Empire. You can Google it to get to the website or there is a Facebook page, very responsive, very wonderful person. I can't score them lower than 10 out of 10. So yes, check him out. Take care guys, bye bye.